bezig. Ik heb je niet goed verstaan. Kun je dat opnieuw zeggen? Welke bedoel je? Kun je imagine? Siri, shut up. This is how you get bigger synthesizer sounds. That is today's video. Let's go do it right now. Hey, what's up? I'm Analog Kitchen and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, don't hesitate to click subscribe. You'll be updated whenever I upload a new video, but that's when you click that bell icon as well. You'll be kept in the loop and you won't miss out on anything. Martin Leimer, Alex, Christian Vossen and Khalil. Those are my new patrons and they have enlisted on patreon.com slash analog kitchen. I am developing a mixer. There's a gap between a club and a studio mixer. And I do believe that for us dollars live musicians, there can be a lot to gain if we just get to a specific point where the mixer also enhances the performance. I'm developing that now, working with Sebrin, and that's really going well. The filter section is uh, sounding yummy. The gain stage is finished and it's early days, but we're getting to that point. It's really, really cool. So. If you want to be a part of that, you want to help support that fact that we're building that mixer, you can support it on patreon.com slash analogkitchen. I'm trying to just up my NT and make better content for you. And it really seems to be working because you guys are really enjoying the flow um, and the videos are going up and up and up. So I'm glad with the growth on the channel. Thanks for you new subscribers out there. And as well, those patrons obviously welcome. Also, I have Discord connected to Patreon. So if you want to get with in with the like-minded people or you want to ask me a few questions you want to just get in touch that's a cool way to connect and we're building a nice cool community over there so it's absolutely amazing i bet that um, if you are here for the first time with this video after the videos usually there's a video after party that, that goes on till way deep in the night of all people all over the world talking about synthesizers about dollar stuff about their setups and what to buy what not to buy what synths to use and it's a really cool community so you can find it on patreon.com slash allocation and discord connected do that now if you're looking over your shoulder and you're looking at a jupiter 8 a ob6 or something else or maybe a mini moog or even a moog modular then probably this video is not for you you already know what it is to make big synthesizer sounds however most of us we are not so lucky and we might not have a big synthesizer museum full of vintage synthesizers but the thing is not what it is, the thing is how you actually get to that point and why you should get a bigger synthesizer sound. Now, the thing that I bumped into a lot of times when I was making music is that I overproduced my tracks. I made too many mistakes by adding too many sounds. Nine out of ten times when I analyzed what it was, was that the sounds that I was using weren't really thick enough to carry the weight of the drums that I have produced. So my drums, I mean, I'm a sucker for drums and a sucker for bass. If you know this channel, you know that I love my bass line. But it's very important that once you got the foundation of your track going, and that's the way I look at my music production, I try to just like get the biggest uh, frequencies out of the way first. So my bass drum, my bass line, those things are actually in there first, and then it comes to sounds. But once you don't get thick enough or rich enough sounds, it nine out of 10 times means that, mm, you're going to add another sound and add another sound and add another sound. And the thing is to pinpoint one sound or maybe two that will actually complement the track. The coolest thing is if you can only have one sound. Um, Mee bezig. Ik heb je niet goed verstaan. Kun je dat opnieuw zeggen? Siri? Welke bedoel je? That's Siri talking to me. I don't know why. It's cool to get maybe one sort of like sound. I'll show you. Stick it out to the end of the video because you are going to take something away from it. That's a guarantee, I'll promise you that. All right, let's head over to the live set and let's see if we can make it work. All right. Okay, in the box, the Daysmith Tetra. I've got the multi-clock, which is taking care of MIDI for everything, uh, uh, pretty much. So this is my Swiss Army knife. And the top row is in for um, speeding up or slowing down the MIDI streams. So if you've got like equipment that doesn't really run in time, you can just uh, go about doing it in that sense, trying to get it in time. Um, the Akai and the Yoko track are joined together at the hip, so they both switch. Um, the stereo output goes to the mixer, the stereo output of the Akai goes to the mixer, Yoko track as I said, and then the, the one kick drum comes out of the solo, I've wired that to a different separate output, 
and the innovation launch control is taking care of individual levels on the Akai MPC Live. Then I've got the uh, Mini Tower, the Model D and the Tetra coming from uh, the Octatrack because I've written them through the Octatrack. Micro Monster is underneath here. Um, TBO3 is getting a different sync clock. Um, <laughs> you warned me to change the cable. I uh, didn't listen, clearly. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if I can um, uh, migrate my one baseline here and place something with this uh, Minilog XD as well. So I want to make a bigger synthesizer sound by layering a few things together. Now the beat that I've got is this. And then you can hear that that's the Model D playing already with a long decay. Let's go in and I'm not sure what I'm going to play. Let's see. Let's find something to play. What is it? I'll go here. I'm liking that. that one. Let's see if I can change this sound up a little bit. First of all, turn everything down. So what I'm going to do is start with the top oscillator. That's on 32 in height, you know? So I go from low 32, 16, 8, 4 and 2 in terms of pitch. So I'll keep it on a, on a nice 32. I'll go for the square wave, the second to last one. Turn it up full. And it's a bit gritty so that you can hear that if I'm going to use the filter, it will become round if I turn the filter down. That's very important. Now let's add another oscillator to that. You know what? Let's stick the same oscillator on there. Turn it up a little bit, or a little bit, one octave up. Yeah, I like. I'm liking that. Now, third oscillator. That's on the shark fin, ramp down. And I'm going to turn it up by three notes. Now, as you can hear, usually I use this thing for bass, but I'm not going to use it for bass today because I'm thinking to go in with the mini log XD and add a little bit of a texture underneath. So, first we need to stop this. Now we're going to go into some sound design. So, I'm going to go all the way over up in my 200 bank where the sounds are. Uh, so, I'm going for an init program, 220, those are the notes, exactly. Ooh. Okay, first of all, let's start. First oscillator, what am I going to do? Yeah, square wave as well. Square waves, a little bit richer in the texture, so I can go a little bit in aggressively. I'll just um, open the attack a little bit. Yeah. 
Make it a little bit longer. Woohoo! Yeah, envelope generation. Dude, you gotta love this machine, man. Write it instantly, right. So now. Let's see if we can record that, definitely. So we'll go in, main, of the gift for them, because I didn't use a... Um, so, and then I'll go for the MIDI. Obviously, yeah? So, let's do that. Let's record it. One, two, three, uh. Put a record, a record arm, so start. Nice one. So we gotta go, yeah. Okay, now we'll go in and add that second oscillator. A bit of a filter envelope, put the decay of the filter a little bit down because I want uh, that wow 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 sound. And now to make it a little bit more space, spaced out, let's put some delay on there. the Model D on top. Now the trick also is to look for, let's uh, save this because, uh, that's right. What I usually do is, um, I need to have those two synthesizers work together uh, gradually in a way that you say like, okay, um, I understand what this is doing, I understand what that's doing, but the thing, the trick is to not hear them apart so much. So let's see if we can get them a little bit closer together because now I think I hear this and I hear that and that's not in so much unison. So um, let's see. Turn the delay down. What will help is if the envelope generation doesn't really have a different shape than this sound, so they need to be a little bit the same. So, yeah, I like this. Now I'm gonna lower the filter on the Model D. And now to gel those two together even more, because I do think that they are where, where I want them to be. It's almost bent past this, so let's uh, turn the resonance down a little bit. This is only there for the lower bass frequency, eh? There's a tom playing in the beat. Boom, 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 
spoon. I've opted to do the same with my bass note so that the tom is also helping the synths to just go up a little bit more and you'll hear them distinctively if I lower the filter and the attack of my bass notes is not predominantly noticeable then toms in your drums on the same pattern will help the bass notes to stand out a little bit more as you can hear so this down bop, 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 bop. so this is also Do you hear? So now you think that you hear the attack on the bass note, but you're actually listening to the top. And because this is only there for low end energy, we need a little bit more on top. Well, this is a thick sound. This is this. I like it. Now, let's stop this. Let's actually uh, play it from the multi clock. Now. Nah. Get my kick going as well. Can we add the TBO3? I know you asked me to change the cable. I didn't, but it'll work. I'm going to go for a little bit more of a percussive sound as well. That's here. Because the toms and the TBO3 are only there to help my synthesizers. Go back into the XD. And I'm tweak the filters, the cutoff frequency on the TBO3. So that it's only there for just texture or air candy. Whichever way you want it. Turn the TBO3 down a little bit. Up the resonance a little bit. That's what I want. If that's too much low end on your TBO3, um, you can opt to just put in a little bit more overdrive. So it will shift a little bit because the overdrive will act as a bandpass filter a little bit on the TBO3 for some reason. So everything sits nicely together now. Now, I think that everything that I need is there so I can safely up my filters. Get more drums going. Liking this. Now this is one trick to do it. The thing is, um, keep a mental picture of the frequency spectrum. This is the one trick that I will tell everyone. Um, it might sound uh, obvious, but it's not that obvious because your fr frequencies will s fluctuate when you start tweaking those filters. So have a set plan in mind usually i use the model d as my base note or i can use the mini tower that i didn't use today but having a lot of low end frequency uh, frequency content means you have to just strip the whole synthesizer apart and think on where do certain frequencies go or better yet where do they live the two synthesizers here i've opted to use two um uh, oscillators on this one because I didn't want to go for the digital oscillator that's two analog and one digital and I didn't want to go for the digital oscillator I just this is enough not too much attack on it but still it will kick ass you know what I mean so that's done and then just gel them together listen to where they live listen to how they sound that's actually how you can uh, try and work it out well this is the way I do I make bigger synthesizer sounds this is something you need to tweak all synthesizers pretty much have that same approach. They might uh, be approached from a different angle, but you'll get to the same destination if you keep that in mind on how you want to uh, do that. Let's do the same thing that we did uh, last week. Listen to what happens if I just turn that overdrive down. There's more low end frequency now. Sounds a bit digital, so you don't want to go up too high. I'm turning down 
the Model D and I'm going to turn down the master on the Mini Log XD. Turn all the drums down because obviously we're going to go in with the kick drum. Two, three, and. Now it's very tempting to start tweaking uh, the TBO3, but I'll keep it there. I think I can even go for a rounder waveform. Go for that saw wave. Turn that down. And the next thing I think, need more drums. And uh, get this bad boy going. Now you'll hear, this is one range of the frequency spectrum. The TBO3 is sitting on top of it. And then the thing that we now want to do is add the Model D to it. I'm doing this quick fast, but usually this takes me a few uh, moments to get the crowd going, to get my floor moving. And then this is a big impact because this is a lot of low-end content. So I'm looking at that. Okay, Model D. So let my Model D hide in the background as well, so you don't really hear it that I turn it on. So there's two things that I can do with the Model D now. Three actually. I can, um, four actually. I can put noise on there to get a little bit more attack going, but I don't want to do it right now. I can put overload on it to get the sound even louder. But for now, let's shorten the notes, that's the three, and put down the filter, that's four. So that's four things that we can actually do with it. Up the filter. So by this time you're used to the sounds that you're hearing already. I think the drums are working, the bass sounds are working. So everything is just like there where it needs to be. Second thing is make the notes longer. Mind you, if the frequency is too sharp and you make the notes longer, this thing is going to take over your whole track. So keep in mind to keep it steady. Mind the levels. Now we're going to open the filter more. What you didn't hear is that I've opened up the noise on the Model D. You'll hear it now. So that it starts to become a little bit more percussive. Because as you can hear, my, my clap is very sharp and short. And I need something out of my synthesized content to just like kiss uh, the clap as well. So that's what's happening. Now we're going to add a little bit more length and add a little bit more overload. Two, three. And that's when your lead synth takes over. So, in short, there is uh, there are different levels that you can actually stop it. There are different levels that you can address, different approaches in where you think your sound is coming from. And uh, I, you know me by now. I don't want to over exaggerate. I don't want to overcomplicate things. But I do want to get to a point where I think like, you know what? This is going to be working for me. I hope that this uh, takes you a little bit into the realm of how I get my synth sounds to be a little bit thicker. Of course, it's layering, but I think layering is just sticking things atop each other. But with two oscillators and three oscillators here, that's five different sounds that you can actually address. And if you work them well with the TBR3, that makes six. So obviously, uh, that's six sounds that you gel together to get a thicker synthesizer sound. Woo! What is that over my shoulder? Yeah, it's there, finally. The desk is here! The desk is here! Da, 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 da. I will not tell you how heavy it was, but it was very heavy, but the desk is here. Sometimes I think the approach can be a little bit easier, you know, it can be not too difficult. Um, don't overthink it, you know, don't overthink the way you're actually looking at the sounds and the way you want to just do that, you know, just get in there, make sure you get something to work with, get your idea down fast, you know, don't overthink it too much because the fun part of making music is actually making music. What I don't like is programming stuff. I mean, obviously there's no problem, but we are musicians. We try to just like do our hobby or our, or our job or whatever it is. But the vibe you'll get from working uh, the way I do is 
the rudimentary feeling. You'll get results fast because you don't overthink stuff. And if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. But then you analyze, go back to the drawing board and work out something else. But in the end of the day, nine out of 10 times, you'll get a pleasing result. And it's all about getting pleasing results and getting them fast. Now, thanks for watching. Links to all the equipment is noted in the fold below. So if you see something that you like, you can uh, click on those links, those are affiliate links, um, and uh, they'll give me a, short, a small percentage. Patreon, that's where I'm doing a few things, I'm making better content, I'm trying to just up the ante, you know, so I'm actually just like, um, uh, trying to just like get better video footage for you. I'm also uh, working on a mixer that I'm doing together with Sebrin uh, and Wijnand, and uh, we're um, uh, in the early development stages of trying to just like find out like what it is that we really um, need, and the master section's done, filter section's done. Uh, I think we're looking at the gain stage right now and some mutes. So um, it's it's going to be cool. It's a very exciting project. As well as um, the music, you can find that on Bandcamp um, if you like it, uh, if I like it even. So um, you can support me there in terms of uh, the music that I'm doing now uh, subscribe if you didn't do so already thanks for watching and if not anything else I'll catch you next week on another video peace